Good morning. Good morning. My name is Shane. I'm one of the pastors here at New Hope. And uh, I need to begin with a disclaimer. What are you laughing about? The disclaimer is that I am not an electrician. Nobody's surprised. I am, I'm not an electrician. I do not play one on TV. I did not sleep at a Holiday Inn last night. I am, I am, I am baffled when it comes to electricity. I don't understand electricity. In fact, um, if, if, you, if you've been around long enough, you've probably heard a few stories about situations and experiences between electricity and myself. You, you maybe have heard a few stories of maybe some things that probably shouldn't have happened that I've been involved in when it comes to electricity. Um, I don't know what it is. It's like, it's like oil and water. I, I just, um, I can't figure it out. I don't understand it. I don't know. I'm limited in what I know about electricity. Here's what I know. I know when you flip the switch, usually it's up. Sometimes it's not. You know, usually you flip the switch up and when you do, lights appear, right? And when you flip the switch down, usually lights go off. You know, it's bedtime, whatever, right? That's, I know that. I know that there are, there are some colored wires that mean things. There are like black wires and white wires. There's a copper wire. And those wires connect to other wires a certain way. And if you don't get them connected right, some bad things can happen. I, I, know, I know that. Um, I know, I don't always live by this, but I know that when you work on outlets and, and change lights and things like that, I know that you're supposed to go to the breaker box, right? And turn that box, turn that little switch to off instead of on. I, I know that, right? I know, yeah, I, I got that. Do I always do it? Not always. That's not good. It's not a good practice. Don't do that. Um, I know that it's not good to test to see if the electricity is on by, by hitting the wires with a, with, a, with a screwdriver. That's not, you know, shouldn't do that. I know it's, it's never good when you and, 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 a, and a trusted friend of yours are working together on some electrical stuff. And I've got a lot of confidence in this guy. He, he knows what he's doing and, and I'm helping him. I'm, 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 holding, I'm holding this thing up above my head and, and he's running this, this wire that we that he, not we, I don't know, not we, he, that he ran and we're running it, we're pulling it up this, this conduit with this metal fish tape. And when you get to the top, there are these, all these two little post things that they're hot. I mean, you touch them with metal and they're gonna, I mean, bad things are gonna happen. And so I'm holding this and he's pulling on this wire trying to get this run through this conduit and it breaks free and the fish tape hits one of those one of those connectors, and it scared me about half to death. It sparked, it popped. I, I jumped back. I mean, I think I'm, I think I'm dead. And I happened to be standing right beside this window about, about yay big. And what I thought was gonna be something simple, a quick, easy job, save a little bit of money, turns into this, this crack, this split all the way up this window and turns into bigger than what you'd plan and what you expected. And so I get a buy and um, it, it didn't just happen. Like it's, this was a couple years ago, okay? So it didn't just happen, but I, I know you shouldn't stand next to big windows when you're messing around with electricity that's not turned off. I, 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 know, I know all of those things. Here's why I say all that. Because I think, I think electricity is, is sort of like prayer. 
that, that we that we don't necessarily, well, some of us do, we, I say me, that, that I don't know how electricity works. And there are times that I, I don't know that I completely understand all there is to know about prayer. I just know that, that it, it works. You, you flip the switch on and the light comes on. You, you speak some prayers, you, you utter some prayers and, and, and prayers can be answered. But sometimes I don't know how. I don't know why. I, I don't know how, how all that works. And so this morning, what I'd like to do is I'd like to kind of, kind of jump in and 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 kind of make an, an illustration based out of some passages passages of scripture that that we that we can look at and that we can I, I think discover how prayer really works and not just how prayer works but how we ought to pray. I, I, hope, to, I hope to accomplish that this morning. I, I hope that we can, we can do that. So here's what we're gonna do. We're, we're gonna look at Ephesians 6, verse 18. Same verse that we looked at last week. We're, we're gonna be in this verse for a few weeks. But last week, we looked at the first two words. We looked at and pray. And we tried to answer this question of why, why do we pray? I mean, if, if God knows all there is to know, if he has perfect knowledge, perfect understanding, if there's nothing that God can learn, there's nothing that we can teach him, there's nothing that surprises him. He, he knows what we're gonna say before we say it. He, he knows what we're gonna think before we think it. He knows our deepest need even before we even know it. And so we ask the question, why pray? So this week, we're, we're going to dig into how, the, the, the how, it's kind of the, the, the behind the scenes, what's actually happening, what's going on when, when we pray. But this verse in Ephesians 6, verse 18 says, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests, with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Now it's interesting that this is not the only place in the Bible that it, that it, it tells us to pray in the spirit. Jude, Jude 20 says, but you dear friends, build yourselves up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. So there's something to those three little words that we should pray in the Spirit. And be, before we dig in, let me, let me um, uh, it's, it's just gonna, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna glance over it here because we could spend weeks talking about this. But there's this, this idea and we believe as, as a church, I, I believe in, in, in the Holy Trinity, that, that, that there, is, there is God the Father and there's God the Son, and there's God the Holy Spirit, and, and that they all are God, but yet there are three distinct persons in, in the Holy Trinity. I, I believe it. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I mean, you, you, we could try to explain it, describe it, you know, with like water, ice, and steam, and, and, and an apple. You know, the outside of the apple's hard and crunchy. The inside's, you know, kind of soft and juicy and there's the seeds, but, but it's all the apple. You, I mean, you try to describe it to a kid and just, just believe it. Just believe it, right? I mean, it's, it's hard to explain and describe. Wait a minute, it's, it's three, but it's, God is what? God, I believe it. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And, and I believe that, that we, we see a picture of this in Galatians 4, verses four through six. You, you're, gonna, you're gonna see the verses up on the screen. It says, but when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. Incredible. There's, there's God the Father who sent God the Son 
sent him in bodily form as a human, as a man, as a person to come to this earth to pay our penalty, to die a cruel death on a cross because, because we couldn't do anything to earn our salvation, to earn a right relationship with our heavenly father. And so God the Father sends God the Son. And so, so because of that, we have this opportunity to receive this free gift of a relationship with Jesus Christ, to invite him into our lives, to receive him as our Lord and Savior. And when we do that, this, this happens. We go on, verse six, and because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out Abba Father. This idea of Abba Father, it's, it's Abba basically meaning daddy and, and father. So we've got this, this relationship with God the Father that we can approach him and, and call him our daddy that he longs to hear from us, that we have this this father-son, father-daughter type relationship with a perfect father like like God, but yet he is is still our father. He is sovereign, he's holy, he's just, He he is God. But yet we can approach him because we have this Holy Spirit within us that we receive when we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. This, this guy named Samuel Zwimmer said this. He said, true prayer is God the Holy Spirit talking to God the Father in the name of God the Son and the believer's heart is the prayer room. So it's the, God the Spirit talking to God the Father in the name of God the Son and it all happens right here in our heart, in this prayer room, as we engage God in in prayer. So I believe that the secret of prayer is found in three words, and it's in the spirit. It's the secret of prayer we find when we pray in the spirit. So how does this, how does this work? What's happening behind the scenes? Here's Here's how it begins. It begins with us and our desire to have an audience with God. It begins with us and this desire to be able to, for lack of better words, to have an appointment with the king. So, so we, we need his, his attention. We want an audience with him because there's something going on in our lives, right? For, for, for some, maybe some, some students it's, it's this relationship at school. There, there's this friend or, or maybe not so much of a friend that, that we maybe sit next to in class or maybe is part of, of the same team or same group or same club. And, and every time, every time, you know, we, we come in contact, there's friction, you know, there's tension. Uh, it just brings out the, the worst in, in me. And so, so I don't know how to deal with it. So I need to take it to God in prayer. Maybe it's, for some of us, maybe it's a relationship that we have at work. Maybe it's an employee, maybe it's a boss. I don't know what it, what it might be. But, but you too find that same situation. It's just this tense relationship with someone and you don't know how to deal with it because they just bring the worst out in you. And, and, and how, how, do, how do you treat someone like that? You want, you want to treat them like this, but I don't think that's the way God wants us to treat him. And so what do we do? We, we take it to God in prayer. When we bring it, we bring it to him. We, we need an audience with God to have this conversation with him so he can help me through this. Maybe it's, um, maybe it's we see that, you know, we had our taxes done and for some reason there was this mistake made and it was in our favor. We start to think, and the government's got enough of my money, right? I pay my fair share of taxes. It was their mistake. And so do, do I say anything about it? Do I not? What do I do? And I, I better take that to God in prayer. So I need an audience with him. I need to have a conversation with him about this. Maybe it's, 
maybe it's this, maybe it's, it's, it's my, my laptop, or, or maybe on my, my electronic device, my iPad, my, my phone. When I'm on social media, there are these images that pop up on my social media from time to time. I didn't, I didn't pursue them, but they just strangely pop up, and, and I find myself tarrying too long looking at certain images on electronic devices, and I, and I know and I think, man, I, I need to take this to, to God in prayer. I need an audience with him. I need to have this conversation with him. I need his help. I need his healing. I need his deliverance. Maybe it's, maybe it's this. Maybe, we, maybe there's just something going on in our lives physically. Maybe uh, there are just these spells, these episodes. I'm just... I just don't feel right. There are just things that I, it's, maybe it's the medicine I'm taking, what, whatever it is, I, there's just something not right physically and I need, I need God's help. I need him to intervene and I need an audience with him. I need to have a conversation with him about that. You, you fill in the blank. I don't know what it is for you, but my guess is, is all of us have something there's something on our hearts. There's, whether it's physical, spiritual, relational, financial, I don't know what it is, but there's something each of us has that, that we need to take to God. We, we need an audience with him and we need to pray it through. We, we need to hear from him. We need to, to just audibly confess something to him. Here's the thing though, is I get and I understand that, that God is, he's, he's not just a, a magic genie. He's not, he, he's not just this, this wishing well. It's not always just about us asking for things from him. I, I get that. We're, we're gonna talk about that in the next few weeks. But, but for today, let's, let's just focus on this, that there's something, there's a need that we have that we need to bring to God. And so here's the thing. When we think about in the spirit, that we pray in the spirit, Let's start here. It's because of this. It's because the Spirit makes God accessible to us. Ephesians 2, 18, the Spirit makes God accessible to us. So, so it's the Holy Spirit that makes the introduction for us, okay? It's, it's this appointment we need with God and the Spirit makes the introduction. He, he gets us in the door, for lack of better words. Have, have you, ever, you ever made a phone call? And you just want to talk to somebody, but you can't get to somebody. It's, it's recording after recording. You've got to listen to all these advertisements before you even know, what button do I hit, right? And so, so we, we, we enter in this, this conversation, and, and, and it says, if, if you have a relationship with Jesus, press three now. Boop, right? If, if, you, have, if you are paid up on your tithes, press six now. Boop. If... If, if, you, if you love your neighbor as you love yourself, press four. Beep. You know, and you just go on and on, and it's the next thing after. Praise God, we don't have to do that, right? Because ultimately where you get to at the end of that phone conversation is, is you hear this. You are number 3,410. Your wait time is approximately 300 hours and 27 minutes. That's, that's not what we experience with God in prayer. Because the Spirit makes God accessible. Because the Spirit is, is that person that you know, that you're glad you know because they've got connections, right? Most of us know someone like that. Like, man, I don't know the answer to this, but I know who to ask. I go ask them because they... They've got the connections. They know who to talk to. They've got the relationships, right? That's, that's the spirit. The spirit makes God accessible for us in prayer. So the spirit makes the introduction. And I know God knows me, all right? Just, just humor me for a minute. But the spirit says, Shane, I you to meet God. God, I you to meet Shane. Obviously, he knows me. He created me, right? He formed me. He knows everything there is to know about me. But the Spirit makes that connection. He makes that introduction. And so now, 
we have an audience with God because the spirit makes him accessible. But, but we begin to struggle because we remember all of our flaws, all of our failures. We remember the things that, that we were supposed to do that we didn't do. And we remember that we remember the things that we, we did do that we weren't supposed to do. And so we start remembering those things. And we tell ourselves, oh, why, why am I here? I, I've, I've messed up. These, I've, I've done these things. I've, I've said these things. I've not done these things. And I don't deserve to be here. I, I don't deserve to have an audience with, with God the Father. I don't deserve to have his undivided attention. I'm not worthy enough. I'm not good enough. And we question and we doubt and we struggle in, 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 in that time of prayer with, with God. And so we think that the spirit has moved on. We think that, that the Holy Spirit did what he does and he makes the connection, he makes the introduction for us and then he's off doing something else. He's got bigger fish to fry. He's got other things to do. And so as we're doubting, as we're struggling, as we're questioning, as we're wondering, why am I here? I don't deserve to be here. We're kind of startled because we feel this, this hand on our shoulder. He kind of squeezes tight. And he begins to speak softly into our ear. And he says, you deserve to be here. Don't, don't fear, don't, don't doubt. You, you aren't wasting God's time. He, he actually, he had you on his calendar. Let me, let me show you right, right here on the calendar, right, right there. there. There's your name. He, he had you on his calendar. He was expecting your appointment. In, in fact, in fact, the father has been telling me that he wants to speak with you. He, he's, he's been telling me that, that he's got these incredible things planned for you. He's got amazing things in store for you and he just wants to talk to you about it. So don't fear don't doubt, don't question why you're here having a conversation with him. But the appointment doesn't end there. It, it doesn't stop there as long as we don't leave, as long as we don't walk out the door. You, you see, we, again, we, 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 think, we think the spirit has left, but he's, he's right there beside us. And then we ask ourselves, what makes us so special? I mean, there, there are other people out there that probably, probably need it more than I do. There are other people in worse off shape than me, worse conditions than, than me. What makes me so special? And the spirit again, he, he whispers to us. He says, you, you know that good friend of yours? You remember? His, his name's Jesus. He, he pulled some strings for you. He, he made some sacrifices on your behalf. In fact, he made some pretty significant sacrifices, in particular, one that I know you're aware of, that Jesus pulled some strings so you could be there in in conversation with your heavenly father, he was able to get you some time on God's calendar. But then we, we think, man, I, I just don't deserve it. I just don't deserve to have this time with him. We question, we doubt, we hesitate. We, we, we're skeptical about it. We have reservations. So in, in this uncertainty, we, we move forward with this attitude of fear and suspicion because we wrestle with the fact that the Spirit gives us confidence to go before the throne of God. Because the Spirit is still right there with us. 
He's, he's right there with us, encouraging us, embracing us, cheering us on. He's inspiring us. He's affirming and supporting the fact that we are God's sons and we are God's daughters, that, that we are heirs to everything that God has. The Bible tells us, in fact, that together with Christ, we are heirs with God, we are heirs of God's glory that if we have received this free gift of salvation, that if we have received Jesus into our lives, that we are right with God the Father and we have received the presence of God the Spirit in our lives and there is nothing that changes the fact that we are part of God's family. So the Spirit is right there with us, giving us confidence as we pray. And you say, I just don't know what to say. What do I say? What do I I say to to God? What what is it that that I can communicate to him? Remember, he knows everything. There's nothing that surprises him. What, What words do I use to speak to an incredibly, just an amazing God? What is it that I would say to him? And as if the spirit wasn't already doing enough, he again, he comes alongside and he begins to help us as we pray. He begins to help us. I mean, isn't it, isn't it crazy to think that we, these, these, these mortal beings, us as humans, isn't it crazy that we would think that we could know what to pray to a divine God, that that we might know in this crazy world in which we live, the stuff going on in our lives, in our families, stuff going on in our community, stuff going on in this country, the things that are going on around this world. Isn't it crazy that we, we could know specifically what we ought to pray without some help from a divine spirit. Like I, I think, I, I know that we, we can pray in general terms and I think God receives those prayers. I think he wants to hear those prayers. That we can pray, God, God heal our country, heal our land. We, we can pray big prayers like that. But, but if, we get, if we wanna get specific, if there are things that, that we wanna, wanna pray specifically to God, how how might we know what those things are if we don't have the Holy Spirit with us, inspiring us and helping us and leading us and knowing what to pray? One of my favorite passages of scriptures is in 1 Corinthians chapter two. And and in that passage, we find out, it, it tells us that who knows the thoughts of a man, but but that man's spirit. And who knows the thoughts of God except for God's spirit. And this is the the exact spirit, the, the Holy Spirit, God the spirit that knows the deep things, that searches the the riches of God, who knows all of that. That's the same Holy Spirit that we have living inside of us, that dwells in us, that lives in our heart. That's the spirit that we have. So when we pray to a, to a holy God, wouldn't we want to pray in accordance with the Holy Spirit? The Spirit helps us when we pray. We don't really know what we should pray for. So where should that help and inspiration come from? Should it come from our best friend? Should it come from our neighbor? Should it come from, from, from anyone else besides the Holy Spirit or, or, or inspired by the word of God? Because the Spirit helps us when we pray. Have you ever, have you ever seen or experienced something incredible, something amazing that only God could do that, that you never would have imagined, never would have dreamed of, of praying that but God showed up in this incredible way 
and he did something amazing. Just think of those things, and I'm, I, I, I'm just humbled that, that God would do far more than I could ever think or imagine, let alone yet audibly speak or audibly pray to him. That's, that's the kind of God that we serve and that we worship and that we pray to. So as the Spirit helps us when we pray, the Spirit helps to purify our thoughts. He, he helps us to, to, to stay focused in, in prayer, let me, let me ask you this. Has, has anyone ever been distracted in prayer? Have, have you ever found yourself, you set aside some time, maybe it's in the morning, the evening, whenever, whenever you choose, you set aside this time and you begin to pray. And you're good for the first few minutes. Things are going well. And the next thing you know, you're, you're thinking about dinner. You're thinking about, you know, your, your, your shopping list. You're thinking about all the things you have to get accomplished in the day. You, you, ever, you ever been there before? Man, I, certainly. I, I'm there more than I'd like to admit. Can, can, can I encourage you with this? Could I share this with you? A, a, a breakthrough for me. Something that, that helped me several years ago. I know that for, for many of us, we struggle with praying audibly. We, we struggle with praying out loud and, and we, we, we pray in our minds. We, we, we pray right up here and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, God understands our prayers. He even, he hears our prayers that we don't even speak. The prayers that come from our heart, the prayers that are in our mind, he, he hears them, okay? So I'm not saying that they're not valid prayers. But what I am saying is this, is a breakthrough for me, something that changed my prayer life was praying out loud, was praying audibly. And for some of you, ooh, I got squeam, squeamish a little bit. I'm kind of, I, I, don't, um, I don't like to pray out loud. I don't like for people to hear, hear my prayer. And, and I, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that you, you pray like the hypocrites. I'm not saying that you, the you know, with your hands raised and wearing robes and, and all this other stuff. So people see you praying. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you, you, you get in your prayer closet. You, you, you pray in the car. Um, you don't have to close your eyes, but you pray in the car by yourself. But express it audibly. Speak it. Say it. For me, it helps keep me focused. Even though there are times, even when, I, even when I pray out loud and it's audible, th there are times that I still find myself getting sidetracked and seeing squirrels and everything else. And, and there, are, there are times when I find myself saying things like, what in the world did you just say? That makes no sense. That's okay. God, God knows. He, he knows the thoughts and the attitudes of our heart. He knows... He knows what we're trying to express. He knows what we're trying to communicate to him. He gets that. But try it. If, 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 you're, a, if you're a prayer right up here, try it. Try, try, to, try to speak it. Try to communicate it. Try to say it, say it verbally. I, I'd, I'd encourage. I, I, it, was, it, was a, it was a breakthrough for me. And so the Spirit can help us stay focused in prayer. The, the, the Spirit can help recall God's word in prayer. There, there are things that, you know, maybe we, we hit a roadblock in prayer and it's like, man, this scripture just popped in my head. How did that happen? It's the Holy Spirit. It's how the Holy Spirit helps us when we pray. As if all of this wasn't enough. With the Spirit gaining us access to the Father, with, with, with the Spirit um, giving us confidence to go before the Father, with, with the Spirit helping us in our prayers, as if all of that wasn't enough, the Spirit takes our, our murmurings. The Spirit takes our garbled up sentences. The, the Spirit takes the things that we say, e even when we don't use the, the, the right English, e even when we're, they're not grammatically correct, the Spirit takes what we say, these utterings and these, these imperfections that come out of our mouths, and he does something beautiful. He, he, he does something unimaginable. 
He does something that, that we could never think or dream of. He, he adds to our prayers. The, the, the Holy Spirit prays on our behalf as if everything else wasn't enough. He prays on our behalf. Scripture tells us that he prays for us with, with groanings that can't be expressed by words. He pleads for believers in harmony with God's own will. There, there are just things that can't be said. There are things that you can't communicate, that you can't say with, with the 26 letters in which we have. You can't put words together in, in such a way to accomplish what the Spirit can accomplish when he prays for you. Even if you speak another language other than English, it doesn't matter. The Spirit can communicate in, in ways that we can't. And so he prays, he pleads for us in accordance with God's will on our behalf. We may not even know what God's will is. We, we, we may not know his plans. We, we may not know the, the purpose that he has for our lives, but the Spirit does. And the Spirit pleads for us to God the Father in words that we just can't communicate. So how's your prayer life? How's your prayer life? It's, it's so important. I mean, if, if, if we say, if we say that all of this is about a relationship, that, that it's not about religion, it's not about rituals, it's not about checking things off the list, but it's about a relationship with a person. It, it, it's, it's about a relationship with our heavenly father because of what God the son did and, and the access we have through God the Spirit, if it's about a relationship, how do we grow our relationship? How do you grow your relationships? How do you, how do you grow a relationship with your friend, with your spouse, with, with a parent, with, with, a, with a sibling? How do you grow that relationship? Not by avoiding them, not by creating space, but by getting close but by having conversation, but by, by, by sharing things with them, by listening to them, right? If, if, if that's how we grow a relationship, then prayer is so vitally important to growing our relationship with God the Father. So how's your prayer life? Maybe some of you Maybe, maybe some of you struggle with this area, like me, but sometimes I just rush my prayers because I've got things to do. I've, 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 got, a, I've got a busy calendar, right? Not, not me, just all of us. We've got busy calendars. We've, we've, got, um, we've got family stuff that we've, we've got to do. We've got, we've got church events. We've got church activities, We've, we've got work, we've, we've got social things that, that we need to get to. And we lead busy lives. So how's your prayer life? Where does prayer fit in? How does prayer fit in? We're gonna talk over the next couple of weeks. Like, what, is, what does that look like? What, what, what does prayer sound like? Like, how, how do, not, not how, but, but then how, how do we... Um, how do we schedule it? Should we schedule it or should prayer just be spontaneous? We're, we're going to talk about those kinds of things. But can I encourage you with this? Make an honest assessment of your prayer life. Be honest with yourself. 
because, because it, only hurts, it only hurts you. It only hurts you if you're not honest with yourself. But how is it? And if it's not where you want it to be, number one, don't beat yourself up. I've lived there too much. Don't, don't beat yourself up, all right? But let me, let me challenge you and encourage you with this. If your prayer life isn't what you'd like it to be, a couple things. I'd like, you to, I'd like you to rip that communicator card off the bottom of your bulletin. I'd like you to begin filling that out. All, everybody, really. But, but if, you've, if your prayer life isn't where you want it to be, can I encourage you to write it down on your communicator card? And you got two options. You probably have more options than this, but this morning, I'd like to give you two. The first one is this. This is that I'd love to listen. I'd, I'd love, uh, love to, to have a conversation and I'd love to listen to what's going on in your life and, and to hear about your prayer life. Not to judge you, but to encourage you and maybe to help you with some practical steps to improving your prayer life and getting it to where you want it to be. The second option is this. You still confess, you write it on your communicator card and you say, I don't want to talk to you. All right? I'll, 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 give, you, I'll give you that out. And, and, and if you write that on there, that you, you don't want to hear from me, you don't want to hear from staff, you don't want to hear from somebody else, I still think it's worth it because of this. I, I do believe that confession is good medicine. And so I believe that if you confess it, if you write it down, if you confess to one another, if you let it be known for, to me, confidential with the staff, if you let it be known to me, but you don't want to have the conversation for whatever reason at this point, I'm okay with that, all right? And I'll honor that. I won't call you. I won't show up at your house. I might for something else, but not for that. But I think it's important enough. I think it's important enough to take that next step. And maybe the next step is just confessing and saying, it's not where I want it to be. Man, I, 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 I want it to grow. I want it to be better. Not just for the sake of prayer, but for the sake of the relationship behind the prayer. All right? So whether you want to talk, I'd love to, but I will honor. If, if you say, you know what? I'm not ready to have a conversation. Write it down. Let me know. Okay? Let's pray. God, I, I, I do confess, I know I just said it, but I, I need to confess it again. That I, I, rush to, I rush through prayer too often. That I can be so focused beyond, beyond that prayer time to what needs to get accomplished, what needs to be done. God, would you help teach me? Would you help me to learn, to understand that, that the true work isn't the work actually that's done, but it's the prayer time leading up to it. That, that, that that's the most important, that's the most valuable time that we could have making those, those requests, those, those, those pleadings to you. Help me to know it, help me to understand it, help me to be able to live it. God, would, would, you, would you help us with our prayer? Would, would you help us with our prayer time? Would you help us to know what it should look like. Help us to, 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 to be led by the Spirit in our prayers, to not just rush through them, but to be patient and, and to tarry in that time of prayer and allow the Spirit to prompt us, to lead us, to bring people to mind, to bring situations to mind, to bring Scripture to mind so that we can pray in your Spirit and according to your will. In Jesus' name.